Thank you all for coming tonight to Odd Salon Forbidden. Um, I'd like to welcome you all here tonight. And I am really honored to once again get to hand over this stage and this microphone to one of the fellows of Odd Salon. The fellows make up the heart and soul of what we're doing here. They are our uh, regular speakers, they are our mentors, and they are our advisors um, for this project, help us steer where we're going and decide what we're talking about and choose the themes that we do here. And um, I've known Stuart for a very long time, tonight's guest curator. I met Stuart back when we were both very angry booksellers uh, over the shared joys of reading and a shared hatred of customer service. And when I started this project, I asked him if he would come to Odd Salon, and he told me he would only do it on one condition, and that is if I left him a personal invitation on the grave of um, Domenico Ghirardelli in the cemetery in, in Oakland. And so I did, and he came out. <laughs> and um, he, he became a speaker, and then he became a fellow, and I don't even know how many talks Stuart has given at this point. It's, we're in four years now, and we are over 500 talks, and my memory is now, I have no idea. Um, plenty, many, many wonderful talks, including one that included a fez and an anatomy of all of the creatures of Lovecraft, which is one of my favorite ones. So I'm going to uh, hand this over, let Stuart take it from here. Please join me in raising the first glass and welcoming Stuart Gripman to the stage to curate this evening. <laughs> I've never been played on before, that was awesome. <laughs> I would back up and do it again if I could, but we should get this on. on. Um, hi everybody. Hi. Thank you so much for coming. I am thrilled that people turned out and we have butts in seats and I think it's gonna be a great show. So um, let's get right down to it. Uh, we like to start our odd salons with uh, a simple question and that is, who's joining us for the first time? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you so much for coming out. Um, <laughs> I love it. You are in the spirit, my friend. Okay, so a little couple of words about how this works. Um, Odd Salon is a cocktail hour lecture series where we share stories inspired by the odd corners of history, science, art, and adventure. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, there's always, at some point, um, a cat gif. So I'm just going to get it out of the way. Hopefully this won't cause any seizures. We'll... We'll get past it in a minute. Um, but I do have to tell you, uh, the speakers you're going to see tonight, we have experts and we have enthusiastic amateurs, um, which means that our stage can be your stage. So if you like what you see up here and you feel like you have something to contribute, something, some story you're passionate about, um, visit oddsalon.com speak. There's a form there where you can get to uh, pitch whatever ideas you have. Um, and this, we're very serious about this. Usually we have uh, two new speakers every single salon. Uh, last time, and as well as this time, we're gonna have three new folks up here with great stories and fresh ideas, and it's, yeah, they're gonna be awesome. So oddsalon.com slash speak if you got something to share. Um, other thing is, we're not really looking for a quiet, staid audience with hands folded neatly in their laps. Okay, so new folks, what just happened there is, <laughs> We got a couple of call outs that sort of organically started happening over time, way back. Actually, ships started before Odd Salon, but, but what happens is, the most famous one, if someone refers to any sort of buoyancy operated aquatic transport, <laughs> someone else is bound to yell out. Yeah. Yes. Uh, or vessels, <laughs> thank you. Or trimorans, I don't care. Yell it out, get in the spirit of it. The other one that people love happens to be Science, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so get in the spirit and, um, and just enjoy it and be a rowdy crowd, that's fine, we love it. Um, and hey, although we don't want your phones making a lot of noise, don't put them away. If you see something up on the screen that uh, you think is funny, you hear a good turn of phrase from one of the speakers, well, feel free to you know, jot it down, take a picture, and uh, share it right away, whether you prefer to twit a twupdate or instantly gram it, we don't care. Um, tag it, learn something weird, if you don't mind, and, uh, and share it, because the more people that find out about this and the fun stuff we do, um, so much the better. So, um, if you've been to Odd Salon before, um, you may know that um, speakers are showered with great amounts of, wel great 
amounts of wealth. Um, usually the speaker's fee is about $25,000. If you've been here a couple of times, it's 75. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the truth is, if you speak, you earn um, a lovely glass and a couple of drinks. Um, and you also get a book thematically appropriate to, to the theme for the night that's selected by the curator. And uh, so this time around, it fell to me. And I don't know if you ever had to pick a book on the topic of forbidden. I sort of stumbled into it. Some of you are ahead of me. I stumbled into it a little blithely. I thought, oh, I'll just go to Goodreads. I'll type in forbidden. I bet I'll find something interesting. Well, I did. Uh, <laughs> so this is my first hit, The, the Forbidden <laughs> Billionaire. Well, that looks a little romancy, so maybe, um, ooh, hmm, okay. How could something wrong feel so right? <laughs> How could something hackneyed make it to a book cover? All right, well, oh, the children, forbidden attractions, forbidden valentine, the forbidden boy, the naked forbidden, oh God, everything forbidden. Obviously, <laughs> thank you. I was adrift, but before I get off of this shtick, I got two more to show you because I just can't resist. This is my favorite one right here. I don't know if you can tell from your vantage point in the audience, Someone is prodding her neck and ear with a wafer cookie. <laughs> I'm not, I, re, for real. And I'm not here to tell you what is and isn't sexy, okay? Don't get me wrong. I assume that's her deal and beautiful. That's beautiful and wonderful. I don't like cookies and I don't like crackers in bed. Don't want the crumbs. Okay, and the other one is, is I don't, nobody's gonna be able to resist this, this one. Crouching Tiger, Forbidden Vampire. <laughs> so what's going on here? When you go to Goodreads and you search for Forbidden, you get 13,796 titles. If you go a little, you know, vanilla and search for Permitted, 465. So why is it so compelling? You know, what is so amazing and compelling and so, you know, um, just moving about anything forbidden? And thinking more fundamentally, why would anybody forbid anything? Well, so, um, backing up a little bit, yeah. So when I worked at a bookstore a long time ago, this um, kind of weird black-haired lady, I know, um, <laughs> She does some talky, drinky thing in the city now. I don't, I'm not interested, but the point is, <laughs> she didn't ask me if I would be interested in this book. She put it in my hands and said, read this book. Uh, and I did, and I was not disappointed. Uh, and there's an interesting passage about the forbidden in here um, that I want to share. Uh, quote, why make people inquisitive, then put some forbidden fruit where they can see it with a big neon finger flashing on and off saying, this is it. I mean, why do that if you really don't want them to eat it? I mean, maybe it's just you want to see how it all turns out. Maybe it's a great part of, you know, big ineffable plan. All of it, you, me, him, everything. Some great big test to see if what you've built all works properly. You start thinking, it can't be a great cosmic game of chess. It just has to be a very complicated solitaire. And, uh, and I can't really speak to why the, uh, any sort of supreme being would forbid or not forbid anything. It's pretty heady. But I can think of a couple reasons why humans do it, some of which are legitimate. Think, take uh, taboos like cannibalism, for example, right? And pretty much, I know, it's co cover your eyes if you need to. It's pretty tough to watch. Um, it's, it's not gonna get much better, so this might be the high point of the invocations. <laughs> Savor this, friends. Okay, in pretty much every society in the world, with very few exceptions, um, cannibalism is absolutely taboo. It is simply not done. So it makes sense to prohibit it. Society's gonna break down if people are eating other people you know, wantonly, right? So another good reason why you might wanna forbid something is just public safety. Right? If everyone's going around stabby, 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 well, you know, it's problematic. It's going to make a mess. Uh, I can't get behind every sort of prohibition. This dog likes two things I like, and I don't think it should be forbidden. But it's not always, you know, 
things don't always... <laughs> Well, someone knows the dog, so we're hanging out afterwards. Um, but things aren't always forbidden for valid reasons, um, and um, spite is a great example. So about a year ago, an artist named uh, Anish Kapoor uh, basically got control of the world's supply of a substance called Vanta Black. And if you paint it or apply it to something, it can be none more black. Um, this rankled rival artist, Stuart Semple, who felt that he shouldn't be forbidden from access to Vanta Black, but he went on to create what he called the world's pinkest pink. And you can buy it from him, but you must sign an agreement that says, you are not Anish Kapoor, you do not know Anish Kapoor, you are not working for him, you will not give the pigment to him, and you will do whatever you can to keep it out of his hands. Unfortunately, this failed, and Kapoor advised Semple of the situation with the following Instagram post. So forbidding things out of spite doesn't always work so well. And for that matter, forbidding things just to subjugate people is, is maybe one of the most insidious uh, reasons why anything might get forbidden. And there are zillions and zillions of uh, examples of why this might happen. Um, one that interests me a lot is that many societies and many religions do and have for centuries, probably millennia, tried to regulate human sexuality. And this is not without unintended consequences. You can ask the Catholic Church. You can also ask the Centers for Disease Control, who last year did a study and found that students in school districts that teach abstinence-only education have higher STD rates than students who get comprehensive education. So, science. thank you. Yes, science, for goodness sake. Uh, so what we're looking at here is a um, promise ring that's available in bulk from e-commerce giant Alibaba. <laughs> I know, I know, and uh, this is not probably part of my talk, but my favorite thing about this, I went searching for promise rings, and the title on the top of that webpage was Cheap Promise Rings. <laughs> it's a cheap promise, sorry. Um, the inscription around it uh, refers to a verse in 1 Corinthians, that, uh, that speaks of the human body as the temple of God, which is great, you know, I'm fine with that, but I, I can't help but wonder how many people go to read the next chapter of that very same uh, book in 1 Corinthians, where the Apostle Paul advises that, quote, it is better to marry than to be aflame with passion. Oh, Paul. <laughs> They're not, they don't have to be mutually exclusive, Paul. Okay. <laughs> So the last thing I'm gonna belabor my point with <laughs> is one more reason, and maybe one of the most common reasons to forbid something, I think, actually, and that is to make it more appealing. So a certain movie studio, satirized here by Rodolfo Loaiza, uh, an artist, uh, they manufacture DVDs of their films and announce that these films will be going into the vault when the discs sell out. So the implied threat here is, if you don't give us money right now, you might not have a chance to give us money later, so you better give us money right away. And these people aren't stupid. It works. They sell a lot of DVDs because they get it. And this brings us really back to the romance novels because the forbidden is inherently desirable. And even when something that is forbidden that you didn't think you wanted, suddenly you can't have it, well, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end my invocation here with a quote from Mark Twain. And I know what you're thinking. I really went and checked and made absolutely sure that it is a quote from Mark Twain. I know he gets credit for everything. This is something he actually wrote. It's in the book Puddinghead Wilson. He wrote, Adam was but human. This explains it all. He did not want the apple for the apple's sake. He wanted it only because it was forbidden. The mistake was in not forbidding the serpent. Then he would have eaten the serpent. <laughs> so having put that image in your head, you're welcome. I would like you to help me welcome tonight's speakers. We are going to be uh, visited by Sahil Bansal, Brian Hughes, Justin Oliphant, Nadia Lev, Isabel Samaris, and first up, Odd Salon fellow Casey Selden will be coming to tell us about a daring desert discovery.